Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'll be coloring Beach Bella and showing you how I fix some coloring mistakes. This is a Bella 2.0 image and all month long, I'm gonna be sharing some Bella 2.0s with you. If you remember back in the day, Stamping Bella had all of these Bellas who had beautiful dresses and accessories and things. They're great positions that they would stand in, etc. but they weren't really great a lot of times for coloring with Copic markers because they had stick arms and stick legs. Well, instead, they now have nice beefy arms and beefy legs so we can get our Copic markers in there. You still need to practice using just the tip of your marker and using a light touch so you can get your shadow areas added in without filling the entire leg or arm. But you can do it. I have faith in you. You just need some practice. You may try holding your marker more vertically than you normally would for your coloring. I'm so used to doing this that I don't need to hold it perfectly straight up, but for some people that helps in trying to get a really thin line. I am coloring a little bit away from the edge with this BV01 so that I can get a little reflected light. Since she's at the beach, she's going to be out in the sunshine and have lots of light bouncing around. And then I decided to soften these shadows. The BV01 is a very strong color, and I thought the BV000 would blend out a little bit of this before I put the mid-tone color on. When I color skin tones, I tend to put some sort of a purple or blue-violet color down for my shadows. And then as soon as you cover that with your mid-tone, it just turns into a, a more fabulous skin tone color than using just a brown, as you can see is happening here. You don't have to use the blue violets that I'm using. You don't have to even use the mid-tone color that I'm using. It's the concept that's important. Look at your markers and see what you have in terms of blue violets and skin tones and see what works for you. In my Copic Jumpstart class that was completed just recently, but you can still go and see the self-paced version of the class anytime you want, we talked a lot about how to blend colors, how to choose colors, and how to layer them so that you would get the color that you wanted without having to go buy more markers. So that's an option for you. You can just go to my blog store and find that class there and go learn a lot about your Copic markers. So you can see how tan she looks because I used all those really beefy colors. And that is what I was going for on this particular one. So I used a lot more of some of those colors than I normally might on a person image. I decided to, for the moment, leave her hair fairly light, so I chose a very light purple for my shading on the, the blonde hair. Those who took the class will also know why that works, and blending it in with a, a different yellow. And I have the option to add more depth and shadow to it later if I want to, but for now I wanted to see what the focal point of my image was going to end up being. And those glasses started to become that. I think they're going to be one of the first things people look at when they see this image. They'll see her body, but then those glasses are going to really pop out. Her bathing suit, I was going to go with a pink, and this R20 looks very flesh-toned. And I don't know about you, but if I see flesh-toned colors on somebody's bikini on the beach, it just catches my eye and I'm like, oh my gosh, are they naked? No, they're not. So I decided I wanted to add some really strong colors so that she wouldn't look like she had a skin-toned type of bathing suit on so I gave her some very dark shadows and it's more of a salmon or darker red bathing suit now and you could even go in with a white pen and add some pattern and detail onto a bathing suit like that as well just to make sure if you're worried that people are going to think your stamped image is naked <laughs> so next I'm going to spread out some of that pink around the image a little bit so her flip-flops will be pink and that little bottle of suntan lotion will be and here is where I started my mistake because I I wasn't really positive exactly what shade of this BG I was going to end up making this so I started adding my colors and blending them and adding a little bit of the lighter color the lighter BG 10 wasn't blending enough it was just too strong of a contrast between the BG 13 and the BG 10 so then I was like, well, I guess I'll go in with some darker colors since I can't seem to get that to blend. And then I went in here with the BG11. And that wasn't dark enough. So I went back in with my BG13. And by now you can see I'm adding a lot of layers of color. I was finally happy when I started adding my pinks and my reds in my shadows. 
and the color itself was fine, but the bleeding started happening. So I stopped working on that for the time being, and I thought I'd see if it settles in a little bit better, and it did. I didn't need to work on it more, but it did bleed outside of the lines. So I, as I was working on the rest of her, I was just kind of keeping an eye on it and thinking, okay, what can I put down there? Do I want to push the color back in with a colorless blender? Or is there another way that I could tackle that? And since she was on the beach, I was thinking about what I might do to add a little bit of background to it, just a tiny bit. My thought was to put some sand at the bottom and use a couple of colors to sort of push back that color into the, the little bag she's holding. And a lot of times you can take a light color and do it with that instead of doing it with a zero marker. And it's kind of working, but as I keep looking at it, I keep thinking, oh, it's not quite working. I'm still getting a little of the blue-green color out into my sand. And then it turns into how much of it do I worry about distracting from. And every once in a while, I just go back and touch it up and try to push that color back into the bag. It didn't quite work. And I was also struggling with, am I going to bleed all this out into white and let, let the card be a full rectangle with a vignette image? Or did I want to do something else with it? I thought, well, okay, let me put some distraction technique on here by adding some detail with a couple different browns. And I'm just doing some very light stippling, again, with a light touch with the marker, just the tip of it to get smaller dots, as small dots as possible. But the bag had also bled around that left side. So then I had to add a little bit more to distract from that. So I didn't want people to see that there was some bleeding there. And I don't always worry about all my bleeding. If you look at my cards, there are many times when I have a little spot that messed up, but I don't stress out about it. And I know other people might, and I do get comments about people noticing when things don't go quite right, but you know, I'm okay with it and that's good by me. I did give up on trying to blend my blue-green in my sky into white because that was not working. So I die cut the image and that gave me a little more control over the space that I had to fill with my marker. Sometimes that is the better part of Valor to just give up on one idea and change it to be something else. And then it was just a matter of figuring out how that oval was going to work on a card when I got to the card design portion. I wanted to add some grasses to this background because I wanted a little more detail in there. I could have added some clouds as well, but I decided the grasses would be a little better. It would draw a little more attention to the image and the surroundings. And I stayed on a beach once that had these beautiful grasses as you were walking up to the beach on either side of you. And it was just sends my mind back to really wonderful memories of that particular trip to the beach. And then I added a little bit of white pen dots and stuff to the ground and called it done. The card des design stayed pretty simple. I popped up the image on some pattern paper with layers and punched out my sentiment with a circle around it. And I really do like how this came out. Even if I had some struggles along the way, my blending and my bleeding were issues for me, but that happens. It's just the way things go with art and card making and I tend to not worry about it as much as maybe some people think that I should. So there are going to be three more videos coming in July on Wednesdays, so stay tuned for those. Make sure you subscribe if you'd like to get more of those delivered to your inbox. You can hit the little circle beside the subscribe button down below this video on YouTube. And I will see you guys later. Take care and have a wonderful day. Links to everything are in the description. Bye-bye.